This is our third video in a series on procedures in App Inventor. In our first video, we talked about what procedures are. In our second video, we refactored a, a very long method to take out two similar but slightly different parts and make them procedures. Uh, the procedures that we called did not return a variable. In this video, we're going to make procedures that do return a variable. So if you take a look, look at the result message. The result message is what appears when we choose guess, when we have uh, taken elements and put them into our little answer key here. And this tells us if we have guessed the correct composition of the molecule. So the molecule here is water. I have two hydrogens, an oxygen, and a carbon. And we know that the uh, carbon is not in water, so it tells us we've added too much carbon. So what we're looking at now is just that answer part where it tells us if we've added too much or added too little. And you'll notice that I have a total of three if else if blocks that are almost identical. But look closely and tell me what's different. First of all, uh, we are getting a count oxygen, carbon, and then down below hydrogen. And we're comparing it to zero. If it's equal to zero, the user has guessed right for that specific element oxygen, carbon, hydrogen. We left off nitrogen just because I haven't made any nitrogen compounds, but nonetheless, you see that this just tells us if it's zero, we're correct. If it's greater than zero, then that means that there are more in the answer key than there are that the user guessed, so the user did not guess enough of that element. If it's less than zero, then the user added more than actually exists. Okay, now take a look at this. Oxygen, compare that to the block below, carbon. What's different? The only real difference here is the variable that we're comparing against zero and the message which is returned. This is a perfect thing that we can move into another procedure. Now, what's the result of this? The result is that we're modifying this variable called result message. And the variable called result message is what we're eventually going to show to the user. So what we want to do is we want to make a procedure. And that procedure is going to contain exactly one of these if blocks, except we're going to call it three times. Once for oxygen, once for carbon, and once for hydrogen. And we could easily add on nitrogen as well. Um, the procedure is going to accept the variable that we're comparing, and it's going to accept some parameter that we can use to tailor this message, oxygens, carbon, or hydrogen. And it's going to return a string the string is essentially going to be one of these three right here, uh, with the only difference being that element name will vary based on what element was passed in. Okay, so let's get to work. I'm going to grab one of these if blocks for, well, let's see, it looks like it wants me to grab all of them. So let me scroll down, and I'm just going to grab the last one, which is hydrogen. We'll use that as our template. Okay. Uh, I need to grab the notifier and put that back in because the notifier, uh, we still want to we still want to keep that in our event handler. Okay, so now we make the procedure. So I'm going to make a procedure, and this is going to have a, re a result returned. So you see how it says result here, and it has a little puzzle piece. That's in contrast to the procedure we made in video two, which does not return anything. Okay. So I'm going to grab the procedure handler, and we're going to say evaluate element, like so. Now we need two parameters in. Okay, one of them is the element count. The other is the element name. So input, we'll say element count. Uh, so that's going to be a number. And the other one is element name. Okay, so uh, two of our parameters, remember these parameters have a name, a formal parameter, which is the definition of a parameter, not to be confused with the actual parameter, which is the value that we're passing in. So I have a handler. I'm going to grab the if test, and I'm going to throw it into the handler, but it's not going to fit just yet because this requires a puzzle piece. Okay, so the puzzle piece is going to be a new variable, a new local variable, that we will call um, return, uh, we can call it return message, that's fine, return message. Okay, initialize return message, we'll just initialize it to uh, empty text, that's fine, because we're actually going to make the return message in this if block. Okay, 
Now I need to modify the if block a little bit as well because you see the puzzle pieces don't match. But not to worry, there's another if test we can use that has a puzzle piece just like this. So I take this puzzle piece, okay? And we're going to have to get a little bit tricky with this one. We're not going to be able to use our initial one verbatim. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to have to nest the if then else because you see it doesn't have one of these little settings buttons where I can give it multiple uh, else ifs. The other thing is uh, the if test will be just like we've done before where we simply plug in a test. But the then is a little bit different. Do you see how this then allows us to run a sequence of steps? Remember sequence, selection, and iteration? This allows us to run a sequence of steps. This then part doesn't do that. It wants us simply to return a value. That value is going to be end up being eventually the result that is returned from, uh, from this expression, from this procedure. So I need to take this join and plop it in there. Okay, deep breath. What did we just do? Uh, so I'm saying if the hydrogen is equal to zero, then uh, basically, you know what? We don't even need the join, come to think of it. All we need is that message. Uh, then we'll say hydrogen are correct. Okay. But wait a minute. Is it really hydrogen that we want to test? I don't think it is. It's this parameter we're passing in called element count. So let's replace hydrogen with element count. Okay. Now, how do we know if it's hydrogen? It could be anything. So let's remove the word hydrogen because remember, that's a parameter we're passing in here, element name. So as a result, I am going to need to use a join. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this join uh, like so. We'll assemble it and place it in the then part. And we're going to say join element name are correct. So in other words, we pass in an element count could be hydrogen let's say it's two uh, and we pass in an element name which is also going to be hydrogen if the user said two hydrogen and the answer key said two hydrogen it's going to be plus two minus two which balances out to zero and then we are going to say hydrogen which is this element name we're passing in are correct so that handles the correct case we still need to handle the you don't have enough and you have too many cases so let's look at those Unfortunately, with this construction, we can't do an else if. So we're going to need to put an if test within an if test, just like this. Now what we're going to say is we'll do our greater than. If it's not equal to zero, then we're going to come down to this else block here. So the only way we can be in this, this what is highlighted right now, is if the element count is not equal to zero. Let's go ahead and change this to element count greater than zero. And if the element count is greater than zero, the message we need to put is you don't have enough of whatever the element is. So we're going to use a join again because part of this is going to be constant text, text that does not change. Part of it is going to be variable text or text that does change. So I grab the constant text. The constant text is you don't have enough. Okay. The element, well, it depends on what element was passed in. So that's going to be in this element name, so get element name. Okay, now we've covered the cases where it is equal to zero and it is greater than zero. The only possibility left can be it's less than zero. So we will get to this else part, which is here, if it's not equal to zero. We will get to this very bottom else part if it's not greater than zero. The only possibility left is it's less than zero. So once again, we're going to use a join because we have a result that is partially uh, static or constant text and, and partially is variable text. So the join, you have added too much. And then what word do we pass in? Uh, or what's the element? It's the element that was passed in, which is going to be this element name here. You have added too much. Get element name. Okay. At this point, our procedure is complete and so I can delete this remember where I originally pulled this out I pulled it out of our event handler up above so in place of that event handler I can call evaluate element okay and I can do that with all of my other event handlers here okay let's start with the hydrogen one so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to uh, go to variables and I'm going to say set blank. What am I setting? I am setting the value of this result message. Result message is what we're going to show in the alert. What am I setting it to? Well, here's where we use this procedure that returns something. You see how it has the little puzzle piece? Because once our procedure is evaluated, it's going to return one of these three strings. Hydrogen are correct. You don't have enough hydrogen or you've added too much hydrogen. What do we, and you see that it, that's, that's kind of hooked into the result. What do we do with that result? Well, we're going to set it to our result message. So procedure. Okay, we're going to call evaluate element. What's the element count? Uh, it is global hydrogen in this case. So variables, get uh, global hydrogen. Okay, an element name, we just put in some static text that we want to appear in the message to the user, and we make it hydrogen. There we go. Okay, so we replaced an entire if, else if, then, else if, then block with just this one line. We need to do that three more times. Okay, we'll do it with carbon. That's going to be easy. Watch this. Delete. Okay. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to go to variables. I'm going to say set. Okay. And we're going to say result message. Two. Now I want to do the same construction here, but with one small modification, and that is we need to accumulate these answers. So we need to say how many hydrogen we have and how many carbon we have and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use our old friend join. Join is going to accept whatever the current value is of result message. And then we're going to append to that what the values are for carbon. So copy and paste the method call here. And instead of global hydrogen, global carbon. And instead of the label text being hydrogen, the label text is going to be carbon. Okay. Uh, now let's do the same thing for oxygen. Click and delete. You see how much smaller this is getting now. Okay. And now I'm going to duplicate the line for carbon. Snap it right in the middle there. And instead of being carbon, we simply replace it with oxygen. Now think to yourself, do you see how... Do you see how quick I was able to duplicate carbon into oxygen by simply calling the same method? It would be equally easy to set up hydrogen or, I'm sorry, uh, nitrogen or any of the other elements. You see, when we have everything nice and encapsulated into a method like this, all of that logic, we don't have to copy and paste all of that detailed logic. We simply have to call this method but pass in a different element count and element name. So adding nitrogen, adding molybdenum, magnesium would be simply a matter of copying this, changing the variable here, and changing the static text here, and then it's all set. So the internals of our program have changed, but the external look and feel should still be the same. So one important side effect of going from a local variable to a global variable is that these uh, when they were local, these variables got reinitialized every time we entered a block. Now that's not the case. Now they're going to hold their values from one try to another. So anytime the user hits the show new button or anytime the user hits the clear button, we want to reinitialize these variables back down to zero. So I'm going to grab a procedure. This one doesn't need to have a return type. We're going to call this one just re or let's say reinitialize counters. Okay, and this is going to be a sequence of steps where I'm going to say um, set. Okay, set, and we will say global hydrogen, two, and then math, and then zero. This is not a side effect of making the procedures, it's simply a side effect of turning uh, globals and, or locals into globals. And uh, remember that we generally prefer locals just so we don't get so sloppy. If we do go global, this is one thing that we need to consider, which is that parameter is going to be stuck around for a while 
from uh, one method call to another. So I'm going to reset all of these hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen in this method called reinitialize counters. Okay, now I simply need to go to the handler for the clear and I need to invoke that method. No parameters passed in, none uh, getting returned. So this is going to be a very easy call. Uh, we simply call reinitialize counters. Also, when the user chooses new, uh, show a new item, we also want to reinitialize the counters. So let me find, I have a feeling it's going to be down here. Uh, I will find my show new. And once again, we're going to call that same procedure. So you see in this case, this is a very simple procedure. Uh, very easy for us to call at any point. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save the project, and let's take a look and watch it run in the emulator. I'll pause the video for just a moment as we let the emulator restart. So now with the emulator running, I've hit Show New and I see Carbon Dioxide. I'm going to choose Guess, and what do we have? Hydrogen are correct. You don't have enough carbon. You don't have enough oxygen. Now let's go ahead and drag in a carbon. Drag in another carbon. And drag in our oxygen. And let's choose guess again. Hydrogen, hydrogen are correct, carbon are correct, oxygen are correct. So you see that the program still works as, as it has before. Uh, once again, we've made it, number one, much more reusable, number two, much smaller, and number three, much easier to expand. Because you see that our, uh, our block, which used to be humongous, is now a much more manageable block with some method calls where logic used to be. So this button guess block, if you record, if you rewind back to our very first video, you remember this one went on and on and on forever. And now it's actually quite succinct because we are calling one, two, three, four, and five methods instead of the old way where we were calling, uh, where we were simply copy and pasting a whole bunch of tasks. Additionally, we saw we can make a really easy reinitialize method. This one has no parameters coming in and no return value. So this one is really easy to call at any point within our, uh, within our program. So this video has been a video to talk about, about methods that return values and how we can accumulate a value. So in the, uh, we, we had our, our method that we called, or our, our procedure, whatever you want to call it, called evaluate element. It accepts two different parameters, a count for whatever element we're evaluating, and a name that describes the element that we're evaluating. We put it through this if test. Uh, based on the if test, we say the element name are correct, or you don't have enough of the element name, or you've added too much of the element name. We return that as a result. Then back in the original handler uh, for our guess button, we simply accumulate up these results, we join them together, and then we show them all at once. So I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.